All right, welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about the region bounded by sine x, x equals zero, x equals pi, and the x-axis. And as before, we're rotating this or revolving it about the x-axis. So again, quick, quick sketch time. Uh, sine x looks like this. This is zero, this is pi. I know that because sine of pi is zero. And if we're spinning this about the x-axis, it'll basically look like this. So this region, again, we're, we're staying in quadrant one and four. So that was a very quick sketch just to sort of get an idea of what we need to be zooming in on. And this is zero, this is pi. I know this is one because this is f of x equals sine x. I've labeled my function, I've labeled the x-axis, the y-axis, and the first thing I'm going to do is draw a reflection of it about my axis of rotation. So if I reflect that function about the x-axis, I'm going to get, you know, uh, sine x flipped upside down, or negative sine x, rather. Then I pick three trace points. Now here, the left endpoint is already on my axis of rotation. So think about if you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're three feet away, your reflection will be three feet away from you as well, or from the mirror as well. But if you put your nose right up against the mirror, the reflection's nose is right on the mirror as well. So that's this point is not going to go anywhere. Neither is the point at x equals pi. So we can pick three other points. So this point is going to come out towards you, go back behind the screen, and then go back there. So we can pick this point. It'll go out this way, and then go that way. And then maybe this point goes out, goes back in. So I've drawn my, uh, my 3D representation. I've drawn the way that it's being spun. I've drawn three trace paths, or three points and what paths they trace. I've labeled my function, I've labeled the x-axis, I've labeled the y-axis and my hash marks. So that part of the, uh, the question is finished. Then we need to draw a representative slice. It's going to be a circle. It doesn't need to be that big. Some people want to draw it small, that's fine. Because we're slicing perpendicular to the x-axis, the radius is going to be a vertical distance. So the radius of any of these representative slices will be the distance from the x-axis to whatever the height of the function is. The distance from the x-axis to the height of the function, x-axis, height of the function. So my radius will be this distance, which is r equals y. The thickness because I'm cutting perpendicular to the x-axis or slicing perpendicular to the x-axis to have constant cross-sections, the thickness will be dx. So as before, volume is the integral from where we start slicing to where we stop slicing. We start slicing at zero on the left end, so the integral will start at zero. We'll go up to uh, pi, because that's where we stop slicing. Pi times the radius squared dx. So we have the integral from 0 to pi of pi times, well, my radius is y, so I'll write that here. And unlike the previous example where y was always 3, in this case, the y value will change. So if you think about the distance from this point to this point, that y value is different from the distance from here to here, and that's different from the distance from here to here. That or all those y values can be defined by finding the y value of this function at some x value. So if I pick this x value, pi over 2, if I plug pi over 2 into sine x, I'm going to get 1, which in fact gives me the height at this point. And it happens to be 1. So what we can do is say that, well, I cannot integrate a function of y with respect to x, but what I can do is replace y with sine x, which is what y actually is, and then integrate this function. So now I can integrate sine x, the quantity squared, with respect to x. I, I know how to do that. And that will be the definite integral that gives us the volume of this football-shaped region. See you in the next video.